magnetostatics boundary conditions. We had almost the same lecture in electrostatics when we talked about boundary conditions. So much of this will repeat. And in fact, I think we can move a little bit faster since we've already discussed most of this in the electrostatic section. So we will derive the boundary conditions from the integral form of Maxwell's equations. So we'll talk about the boundary conditions for the tangential magnetic fields, boundary conditions for the normal magnetic fields, and we'll finish with law of refraction for magnetic flux. Let's take a minute to review how we're going to derive these boundary conditions. For Maxwell's equations, we have the differential form and the integral form. The differential form having derivatives, those explode at material interfaces. And so when we solve problems with the differential form of Maxwell's equations, we need boundary conditions in conjunction with the differential equations. The integral equations don't need the boundary conditions. Somehow that information is embedded into those integral equations. So it makes sense then that we derive our boundary conditions from the integral equations. So it will turn out from Ampere's circuit law, we'll use this to derive the boundary conditions for the tangential components of the magnetic fields. And then we will use Gauss's law for magnetic fields to derive the boundary conditions for the normal components of the magnetic fields. Let's derive the boundary conditions for the tangential components. So here's our setup. We have the interface between two different materials. Material 1, described with a permeability mu1, and material 2, described with a permeability mu2. And along the interface, we also have a surface current K. And remember what this notation means. That means there is a current passing into the screen. So it's parallel to that surface and is traveling in the third dimension that we can't really show here, but it's uh, the, the current is traveling into the screen. We also have a surface normal here pointing from medium one to medium two. That's what this subscript indicates, one, two. And so we'll have a magnetic field on either side of that interface and even though I'm drawing these you know, somewhat extended into each of the mediums, really what I'm drawing is a magnetic field immediately at the interface. That's just kind of hard to draw and convey here. So we want an equation that can relate those two. So if we know one, we can calculate the other. So to start this analysis, we decompose those fields into normal and tangential components. And it turns out the normal and tangential components will have different boundary conditions. But this is the basic geometry that we will proceed with. So for the tangential boundary conditions, we use the integral form of Ampere's circuit law for magnetostatics. And so this equation states that the total current is a line integral of the electric field integrated around some closed contour. So that means if we do a line integral of the magnetic field around some closed contour, we will get the total current enclosed within that contour. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to integrate from A to B, B to the surface, the surface down to C, C to D, D to the surface, and then the surface up to A. So our single closed contour line integration becomes six separate line integrations. So the first one, we're integrating from A to B. So we have an integral A to B of H dot DL. Then B to zero, zero to C, C to D, D to zero, zero to A. So we just really have to figure out what is h dot dl and then be able to integrate it. And we've chosen this surface and this coordinate system to make that step easy. And by the way, what is the total current? Well, if we know the current density k, then it's k times the width of this window, delta w. That is also our total current. 
So we arrived at that total current by adding up the current density and also doing the line integral. And our boundary condition falls out when we set these equal. So looking at this first integral, that will simply be the tangential component of H in medium 1 times W, delta W. That's the width of this side, delta W. Then we move to our second integral. Now we're going from B to 0, B to 0. And so that's a minus the normal component of H in the first medium times the delta H over 2. Delta H is the total height of that window. But since we're only integrating from B to the surface, it's half of delta H. And there's a minus sign here because we're integrating downward and up is the positive direction. Then we integrate from the surface down to C. Again, that's still in the negative direction, so we have a negative sign here. But now we're in medium 2, so it's the normal component of the magnetic field in the medium 2. And the length of that integration was delta H over 2, just like it was above the surface. Okay, now we move to our fourth integral from C to D. Well, we're in the negative direction, so we'll have a negative sign here. This is the tangential component of the magnetic field in medium 2. And the length of that integration was delta W. Then we integrate from D to 0. That is in the positive direction, so we have a positive sign here. We're still in medium 2. So it's the normal component of the magnetic field in medium 2. And the length of that integration was delta H over 2. And the very last thing was integrating from the surface up to A. Still in the positive direction, but now we're back in medium 1. So that's the normal component of, of H in medium 1. And the length of that was delta H over 2. So we've done a lot of stuff like this before. If we inspect these terms, what we see is that there are four of them that look the same and cancel out. So we can cross them out of the equation, and we end up here. So this is a scalar equation, and we can generalize this for any surface in any orientation. And if we take the difference of the magnetic fields on either side of the interface and then the cross product with the normal component. So what's happening here? We have the difference of the magnetic fields. When we take the cross product of the normal component, this leaves us with the tangential component of H. In fact, it leaves us with the difference in the tangential components on either side of the interface. And that has to equal your current density along the surface. So this is a... a the most general way and I think the most useful way to express the boundary condition. And it's just a 3D generalization to our conclusion up here. So that's our boundary condition for the magnetic field intensity. Well, what about B, the magnetic flux density? Well, we apply the constitutive relation and we can just immediately write that. So that's our boundary condition for the tangential component of B. So in the absence of a surface current, which happens a lot, particularly when we're dealing with dielectrics, our boundary conditions reduce to this. And these really are the exact equations we saw in electrostatics. It's just that we had an E instead of H and a D instead of B and an epsilon instead of mu. That's it for the tangential components. Let's look at the boundary condition for the normal components of the magnetic fields. So we have the same setup. We're writing B here instead of H. And we want to apply Gauss's law. Remember what Gauss's law is doing. It's integrating the flux over some closed surface and we're going to let that closed surface be a cylinder and enclose some portion of the surface. And since there is no such thing as magnetic charge, if we integrate the flux of the magnetic field, we should get zero. So we can divide this closed surface integration into three different surface integrals. 
we can integrate the top we can integrate the bottom and then of course we'll have to integrate the sides all the way around so we separate this into three separate integrals now in the limit as delta h goes to zero and this little pill box is closing in on the surface the integration around this side also goes to zero and really we're just left with the integrals on the top and the bottom and if we perform those integrals we'll see we just have the normal component of b in the first medium times the area of that surface so that's this area minus the normal component of b in medium two times the surface down here and why is there a negative sign here because we're talking about the b field punching straight through that surface in the downward direction that is the negative direction so that's what the negative sign is doing there so this tells us we can cancel the delta s and so b1 minus b2 that is telling us that the normal component of v has to be the same on either side of the interface so i like writing the boundary condition this way the best normal component of the b field in the first medium has to equal the normal component of b in the second medium we'd like to get a similar boundary condition for the magnetic field intensity and we can get that simply by applying the constitutive relation to this so there is the boundary condition for the normal component of h so we have to conclude here it was the tangential component of h that was continuous across the interface the normal component of h is not continuous across the interface however the product of permeability times the normal component that product is continuous across the interface our last subject the law of refraction for magnetic flux so we know the angles of the magnetic fields on either side of the interface will be different we would like to have an equation to calculate those angles that don't contain the field terms in them so though we would need some equation that just has the two angles and the permeabilities on either side of the interface so we'll start this analysis just by writing very general expressions for the magnetic field intensity on either side of the interface so on the first side we have an h1 and on the second side we have an h2 and of course we can decompose this into tangential and normal components at this point we can express the tangential and normal components in terms of the angles so we could write it this way where h1 is the overall magnitude of the magnetic field in medium one and h2 is the overall magnitude in medium two so then we incorporate these signs sine theta one and cosine theta one to calculate the tangential and normal components for any angle so we have theta one which is the angle off of the surface normal inside medium one and theta two which is the angle off the surface normal in medium two so we can see how these are defined here and we're always defining these angles off of the surface normal so that's an important thing to keep in mind so we apply the boundary conditions for the tangential component and for the h field it's the tangential component that is continuous across the interface so h1t has to equal h2t and we have these new expressions for the tangential components in terms of the magnitude and the angles we also have the boundary condition for the normal component of h the normal component was not continuous across the interface but the product of permeability and the normal component was continuous across the interface and of course we can write the normal components in terms of the magnitude and the cosine of the angles so we now have two equations one that came from the tangential component boundary conditions and the other that came from the normal component boundary conditions now let's divide these two equations we'll divide the equations when we do this 
the magnetic field terms disappear it's because the H1s on the left, they cancel, and the H2s on the right, they also cancel. We also have a sine over cosine, which becomes tangent. Sine over cosine becomes tangent. And we're left with our final law of refraction for magnetic fields. And those, that equation contains no magnetic field terms. Even though we're relating angles on either side, it's important not to confuse this with Snell's law. Snell's law deals with bending of waves at an interface. It's something we'll talk about later. This is not Snell's law. This is simply relating static fields, the angles of static fields on either side of an interface. 